Well, Graham, LOI TV, now that you've gone on to <laughs> world stardom with RTE and Virgin Media and News Talk and whatever, but your humble beginnings in LOI TV and it's been a kind of a special experience. It's like saying you're world champions when you win the Super Bowl. Yeah. Only in America, <laughs> I'm only on RTE. So. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Don't do you know what? Oh, no, 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 <laughs> no. Sorry, it's, it's only in Ireland. I mean, yeah, uh, yeah I, I, I touched on it before. Like, it started as a hobby because I was, uh, my wife and kids were still in Scotland, mm. and I think Shane Robinson wouldn't be the most talkative fella in the world, so he was he recommended using me probably just to get him out of doing it. And then, um, from the get go, it's been great, Con. I've actually enjoyed it, really enjoyed it. Uh, and I'm not just saying it, but working with yourself has been a gift because like even the small little things that I was doing wrong at the start, I was um, I was an awful man for calling the offsides way too early and uh, <laughs> you say, sort of gave me the heads up on it and then small little things that, you know, in, inside getting used to being a co-com has been fantastic. It's been mm -hmm. really, uh, some of the games have been fantastic. Yeah. They've been really enjoyable, I have to say, uh, and in great company too. I have to say, I kind of preferred working with Shane Robinson. Uh, <laughs> at least he allowed me to get a word in edgeways. Uh, cheers, Robin. And he brought, uh, them in, he brought them minstrels. He brought the minstrels as well. He brought the minstrels as well. Every he shared the minstrels. He's an animal for the minstrels. But I don't know. In all seriousness, it's been great uh, working with you. And, and I mean, we've <clears throat> the thing about it is, with LOI TV, I think for a, if you look at a lot of teams, their coverage is very, for the want of a better word, biased. Whereas I think we try as much as possible to be as even-handed and, and fair in the commentary. And I think um, you know, fans from other teams have been pretty nice uh, in their comments about you know, our coverage in general. Yeah, I, I, one of the things, I, I tend not to question their character or, or their effort. Uh, I think certain t you can make mistakes or, or the decision-making can be a little bit off at certain times. And it's, it's our job as commentators to say give show the better option that you could have taken whether that's a rovers player or a mm. or an opponent and, and i think that's where it's coming from is I, i'm not we wouldn't go down the the road of questioning someone's character i think that's because we don't know them personally so yeah. i think that in that sense that's where we've been as fair as we can be we call things the way we see it even with decisions sometimes where i'll probably get a bit of stick for I think I remember the Richie Tell one in Europe where yeah. they're saying that's a, and I was like, I think it goes down a little bit. Now I had a, got a bit of stick off mm -hmm. that because uh, we didn't have a Rovers hat on for that one, mm -hmm. but I know if it was given against me, I'd have been raging. So I always flip it from that <laughs> point of view. And in fairness, any time a foul was given against me, I was raging. I don't think I gave away a foul in my life. Uh, one or two. <laughs> um, and just speaking of Europe, I mean, I, there's been a lot of standout moments throughout the season, but I suppose personally for me, I think coupled the Ludogorets game at home when Idemo made it 2-0 with a couple of minutes to go and suddenly Rovers had a chance and also um, Gary O'Neill's third goal against Scoopy the, virtually with the last kick of the game and moments like that are they're really special to be working on and, and calling. Yeah and I think we had done an away game of where like we got the call at the last minute as well that was great and even the whole day around yeah. that the excitement of that and the stuff we put up, I think Batman and Robin and all that, that was great. And that got a, like even just the excitement of running in, we got the yeah, game and yeah. we were excited to do it. And then obviously getting the result, but Gary O'Neill's finish here was fantastic because we were, we were right behind yeah. it. Like, and you could see it was such a clever finish. I think I described it as a clever finish because he's used all the bodies in his way to block the keeper and, and he's opened his body up lovely and just stroked into the far corner and they were under a bit of pressure at that stage because I think they got back to 2-1 and there was a little bit of anxiousness creeping in and then he just produces that finish and the whole place erupts and yeah. we're trying to hold it together in terms of being professional and I'm waiting for you to finish so I can come in and describe <laughs> it and uh, wait me turn but uh, yeah it was great and like you said the uh, Ferdinand Farrash game as well and seeing Oidemo score mm. it brought me back to it brought us back Sorry, to when Ludogretz. he scored yeah sorry Ludogretz it brought us back to when he scored against uh, Tuaita here as yes, well when yeah. he came on and he was 17 so uh, yeah it's been some great memories yeah. and actually me correcting you there about the Ludogretz Ferdinand Farrash um, you corrected me at one point during the season I, I, there was one game and I actually can't remember Graham the game Burke. Graham Burke scores a penalty and I, I think I said something like and Rovers have gone ahead but equalizer. it was actually an equaliser. Yeah. And, and I looked around at you. You didn't have to say anything. I looked at your <laughs> face and you're going, who the f
It's this guy beside me <laughs> saying Rovers have gone ahead. Uh, that's probably the worst mistake I ever made, but I just knew from your face. You, that's what like, you actually corrected me with that's the look. I, that's, I actually sent the text to RT that day. <laughs> it says it's time to go. Yeah. <laughs> I've, outgrown, the end of my I've outgrown this. I did. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, I remember going, no. And then, I, yeah, I know. Do you know what? It's, it struck me at how professional you were afterwards because how concerned you got about it. You were like, that's really upset me. I was like, mm. "Can like I, I get names wrong all the time?" Or well, getting like, names you know, wrong is one thing. Getting the score of the match wrong yeah. is actually the worst mistake I've ever That's made. That's what you here, said, you and know? I was a bit like, "Really?" Like I see yeah. some of the gear you used to wear on, on <laughs> public and, and even on crime call. I was like, <laughs> "They were yeah. crime." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so look at them shoes he's wearing. And that's <laughs> these worst mistakes. So uh, yeah, it was uh, yeah, I was surprised, but I remember going. I was like that yeah. going now, <laughs> and the joy of not being on camera to go, oh, or even the, the what catches you out sometimes. Even when we use the headsets, like I, when you're using the headsets to when you're using the one that goes under your nose, it's yeah. great because I can have the one on the like down there, and I can be go on and yeah. shouting. Yeah. But when I have the headset on and I'm like go on, yeah. you can hear it, and yeah. that's the yeah. bit where yeah. you like. You, you always get the little <laughs> tap on the arm, like when we're attacking, you'd be like, stop. So, uh, but actually, sometimes that's nice. Like you did a, I call it a Jerry Armstrong. Um, when Rovers were on the attack, I think Jack Byrne had the ball wide right, and he put in this cross for Mandroyo at the back post. And like all I could hear in my headphones was you going, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was just, it was a moment of brilliance from Jack. And it's sometimes I think it's nice when a co commentator can just let themselves go and say, oh my God, that's unbelievable. It was, as soon as he picked her up and, he's, and he had made eye contact with Danny and I, I seen them make eye contact and I knew if he takes a good touch here, he's gonna play this. And we were, it was right below us in the gantry and I'm like, yeah, he's gonna play it. And then it, the fact he takes his touch and sets himself, as soon as he hit it, I was like, ah, stop. Yeah. And it's right on the money yeah, and it's no, a diving header from Danny and it, it's the pass of the season for me. Yeah. I haven't seen it, uh, like I know his pass down the Sligo was good, but you'd expect Jack to make that, but that's an unbelievable pass and it was right in front of us and I just, again, on the head because I was like, oh, because he's seen it, but he done another one here as well. I think it was against Dundalk where he slips one through for Danny as well in the second half, Danny yeah. Mandroyu. And he just, as soon as he done it, I've gone, oh, stop, because it's yeah. true, it's true the eye of yeah. And you even did a one, I think we were playing um, Bowes, and Dawson Devoy just had a moment of skill in the middle of the field where he flipped the ball up over his head and stuff. And, and instinctively, yeah. just as a football lover, yeah. you have to kind of go, oh my God, that's unbelievable. Yeah, like, it, when, like, that's the good thing about us doing it together is that there's a genuine joy of the game. Like, I, I just, like, I love watching the games mm -hmm. and we, we keep going on about how great it is to watch it there but when you see moments some of the stuff Gaffney's done this yeah. year the outside of the boot passes whether it's off his left foot or his right foot some of the stuff Mandroyu done before he moved on uh, Jack has done some great things I love this I love the stuff Pico does at times when he throws his body in the way yeah. of things yeah. and you just there's a genuine joy of watching the game whether it's a skill from an opposition player you're like ah that's great as well like again I think Forrester will be coming here on Friday and He's had moments where you're like, ah, oh, that's stop it, that's brilliant. So you just like to see good players perform and, and show what they're about. And we've been lucky enough to see a lot of that this season. And just one last thing before we go. Um, one of the things that struck me doing games with you is your ability to spot tactical stuff very early and, and kind of be able to explain to the audience in very... Uh, simple terms what's happening I, I remember there was one game against Harps where the two sitting midfielders weren't covering their defenders and like almost within 30 seconds Rovers had a chance where a ball was slipped through and that was where those players should be and you explain it really well yeah I, I, I've got, listen I've, I've classed myself as a coach first rather than obviously a co-com so I'd look at the game probably from a coach's point of view but I try not to describe it in a way that people don't understand. I know there's a lot of buzzwords around nowadays, but a lot of people that are, want, are, are watching the games want to get an understanding of it in, in as simple form as possible. And, and that comes from actually coaching 10 yeah. year olds and trying yeah. to explain it to them right. in the simplest yeah. form possible so that they understand it. And then you can obviously elaborate on it a little bit more. Uh, and, and in fairness, that, that's the type of thing you're looking for to go, this is the way the game's going and this is what you can do to either get back into it 
or break them down, etc., etc. So you try to explain it as simple, simple as you can instead of trying out buzzwords like you know. But sometimes you get it wrong, sometimes you get it right, and sometimes you get names wrong as well. Speaking of buzzwords, by the <laughs> way, I have a friend who has a shot of tequila every time Graham says the word diag. My friend has gone through 17 bottles of tequila this season so far. <laughs> Diag. I'll tell you what, if he was <laughs> drinking every time I hit them, he'd, he'd yeah. went through more. Uh, listen, in a word, what's going to happen uh, Rovers-Pats tonight? Uh, I think it'll be a tight game. I think Rovers will, will, will probably come out on top of a tight game. I think the home record has been fantastic. I think when they get pushed to the wall, you see the best of them come out. You see the last 10 minutes against Shells, they were brilliant. Uh, the blitz shells, they got chance after chance, and then Gaffney produces a wonderful goal. I think when it gets to this stage of the season, everybody has something to play for nearly. Pats are chasing Dundalk. Yeah. So there's a lot on the games, and that's why the last few games are so good for the league, because everybody's fighting for something. But I think Rowers will come out just about on top on Friday night. Oh, that's going to be a big one. Uh, listen, thanks a million, uh, Graham. If you haven't got too big for your boots, hopefully we'll be back with Graham on LOI TV next week. I'll see, I'll check, yeah, I'll check, I'll check with, with your agent. <laughs> <laughs> uh, listen, thanks a million, Graham. No problem. Pleasure. Cheers.